Hey yo, what's up? My name is Ty Mizzy, watching my channel Mizzy14, and I'm here doing a review of Law and Order SVU, Special Victim Units, Season 20, Episode 5. Let's jump right into it. This is not a good episode, and what I like about this one is it wasn't too much about the court case and getting somebody arrested. It was about helping the person in the process. Now, we get the story. Remember, I said I'm not gonna do any side stories, any the person, the characters, and their own personal issues and stuff. I'm just gonna talk about the exact case and the story itself. Now, we met this girl named Grace, right? So Grace was home. It's a homeless girl. She went to a bar earlier in the episode, and she met this guy named Silas and um, Drew. Silas and Drew. Drew left, Silas was there talking to her, and she, I guess she had a couple of drinks, met with him, all that stuff like that, and whatever happened, we found her on the ground, messed up, they found her, got on the ground, she had no panties, she, it was a pipe next to the body with the blood on it, and it looked like she got sexual uh, trauma, so they went to the hospital, they found out her blood, BAC, blood alcohol level, was, um, blood alcohol content was 0.15 so she had way too much to drink and she had something else so it was not consensual when the thing and then it, it was tested positive for semen and they went to the lab and they find that out so ben sent the community went to talk to her and she could remember what happened she woke up she said remember she remember when she was going to the bar she was going for work no she was going home and she stopped by the bar and able to get something. Sorry. <sighs> to get something. And to do something. And she just thought it was not going to be that much going on. So she met with someone. And chilled out. And next thing she know, she passed out. And now she's in the hospital. And so, Benson went to inform her that she may have got sexual assaulted. And she said, no, why? You know, so I could just say, like, you had no panties. Y'all, they test a positive of semen, and they went in the test. So they kind of find out the semen is matched to the guy named Silas. So they went to pick up Silas. Silas said, no, she attacked me. I was self-defense. She came at me with a pipe, and I went defending myself, and she was trying to rob me. And they was like, but did you have sex? It's the semen tested positive, and you came in. And he said, yes, we had consensual sex. So they arrested him because they didn't know it was like she, she got raped and then tested positive on the semen and all that stuff. It's like, how can you say it's consensual when she was like so drunk and everything. So it wasn't like she got consent to it. So they questioned him and they say like, no, he kept in the story that she attacked me. And she was trying to rob me and do emotional thing. We had sex. It was consensual. I did not rape her. All that stuff. And they come to find out. Yeah, it was for a lot of stuff. So when they, um, Carissi went to drop Grace home, she was set talking a lot of stuff and saying that she got a boyfriend named Tommy. And they said, any family member, she said she got a boyfriend named Tommy. They were trying to call Tommy. She said, no, don't call Tommy. He going to be upset. He going to be mad. So she, Carissi drove her home and it's like she played that she was going to a place, to her house. But she went in there and he thought that was her place. So then he went back to, um, he went back to the building, and the uh, doorman, the concierge, whatever, saying that, no, they don't know who she is. The person like that don't live in this place. And so they look at the footage She said that she walked in and she walked right back out. That's when they find out she's homeless. Now, they went to the shelter that they had to walk in house, and the guy realized that this girl named Grace come here twice a week for lunchtime. And she does be sitting there and talk to this guy named Tommy. When they went to see Tommy, Finn and Carissi went to see Tommy, Tommy just walked away. And it's like they always running. It's like if you had nothing to hide, why are you running? So they just run in and get a question of him and say he don't know where she her whereabouts at. He was trying to help her. He thought that she was in trouble. Or she he thought that she did something. But no, she said not like she did anything. It's like we believe that she got sexual rape, sexual assaulted, and we're trying to figure out the uh, issues and stuff. 
So that was that. They didn't have to let go, Grace go because they couldn't really hold her because she didn't really nothing else going on. But um, then they saw, so there was nothing going on. Now they find out she don't live in the building that she told them she living in. And both of them Tommy don't realize it's like this is like, that's not my girlfriend. She crazy. We just talk. And now the number that she gave them a number to call her to reach her, and the number is for a sorority. So I guess they figured out that she may have been um, in college, and the number she gave, she remembers that it was that's the number. So they went to the um, college called Spence, and they saw a picture, and actually. One of the girls from the sorority said she knows the girl, but she don't know her as Grace. She knows her as Sophie Simmons. The girl, she going, her name is by Grace. So I said, oh, she going by Grace, but there's a girl named know her, so, um, Simmons, Sophie. So she said, like, we, me and her, Sophie, cool. We was freshman year in college. We always hanging out. Then one day, she just went somewhere, went somewhere, and then never came back. And she pulled in her missing like a week after. And I was there. Sorry. They went to, um, they got the, um, Benson and um, got the parents. Because they put her name in a website and said, find Grace. And then hopefully they get the contact with the parents. And they finally got the parents. So they was talking and the father said he remember. Him and his girlfriend at the time went to the college and they had like a weekend thing, it was family day, it was every weekend. And since then, she just disappeared and we have never seen her for three years. No texts, no phone calls, no emails, no nothing. And they thought they had Grace, but they didn't have Grace at the time. Grace left and they, the guy, the father was upset. He said, did you have Grace? I thought you came down here and took me. You have Grace and then you don't have her. It come, um, and the ADA Stone, he was going through his own battle issues because little disclaimer is like he lost his sister in the street before she got institutionalized. So he's got, it's kind of hitting home for him. So it's kind of hard for him to deal with it. So he was going after the parents and say, I'm going to lock you up and all that stuff. I was say, like, oh, craziness. So that was that. So they found Grace. And the website that they went to because they had a website they saying that that could track homeless people. And they saw Grace um, panhandling, panhandling at the um, street. So they went and they went and they saw Grace and then we saw Tommy come and punch the girl. Like beating her and they just took her, they arrested Tommy. Took Grace and they said, Why you like to get beaten up on the side? They said, What are you gonna take with Tommy? And she said, I don't care, get me out of here, get me out of here. So she revealed that. She said, Well, you got raped, how you let Ren rape you and stuff like that. We're trying to help you on the side. I said, I don't need no help, I need him. I need, he's the only one there for me and looking out for me, and I don't need him to go away. We need each other. And he made me feel safe for our stuff. And she said, why you keep letting Ben beat you? Why you keep letting people take advantage of you or something like that? She said, I don't care. I don't understand all that. It doesn't bother me. So, that's why it revealed that she said she did, she was a rape. And she said that, basically confirmed what the guy said. We agree with the money he gave her. They had sex. But she wanted more. So she got greedy and tried to rob him. And I guess that's what happened. She got beat from that. So corroborate his story. So she was never raped. And now they went to, sh Benson went to show her a picture. And in the picture was uh, uh, Sophie. And she said, that's a beautiful girl. She said, you don't recognize her? And she looking at the picture and she was like, no, I don't recognize her. I said, ooh, how you gonna recognize her yourself? But I'll get to that in a minute. Don't recognize her. And then uh, show her the picture again. She said, can I look at this? And then the father came in, was crying. And she said, Dad, why are you crying? What's going on? All that stuff. So I guess like she went back to Sophie and thought she was Grace. 
And I was like, oh, this kind of, kind of thing. Like, she, still, she don't remember a lot of things that happened. And, like, she remember a point, and then she was like, I don't remember. And then this point, and then I never remember. Like, every time it's so traumatic and stuff, like she tried to block that out. So, Bessie has an idea about this lady. So, she went to get a, a psychologist and to question her and talk to her. Psychologist or something like that. A therapist. And... It come to find out she was talking, she's having happy moments that she had with her father when she was 10 years old, and she tried to remember the happy moments, and it was like that, and trying to please him, he was not, he was not around until my mother died, and when my mother died, they, he was there constantly in my life, and he did that. Now, then she said, talking about the college year, so, freshman and sophomore year in the college and she said yeah we have family weekend it wasn't even all that great but it was good but um then it's something else then when that happened she blocked it out and she said she don't remember what happened so the therapist realized she has a disorder I'm gonna read it from here so I won't mention the lavashes um, mess it up. She had dissociative fugue disorder. And what it is is that dissociative fugue disorder is a rare psychi psychiatric disease disorder which characterized by reversible amnesia for personal identity, including memories, personality, and other identifying characteristics of individuality. So basically it's like Usually triggered by child abuse or sexual assault. That's something that happened to Sophie and happened at college. It usually happened at Atlanta College. It was happening around something. I guess they went to find out exactly who was the source of her triggerness of her personality disorder. Because now they realize it was no rape. So they can't really charge a person. So it's more helping Sophie Grace right now and figure out how to heal from this process and move on from this. So they was like, they don't have enough time to find out who is the person. It could have been the father, anybody. So we can't have a, the therapist said, don't have a sit down with a father till we figure out the source of the problem. Cause it could have been the father, it could be somebody else. So, but they made, they had an idea to realize that it, it probably happened around Spitz. What triggered her to, be, her to become Grace? So basically, she formulated a whole new identity and went with that identity and neglect, um, not neglected so far, but not able to focus on that old past life. So any memories that were Sophie had, it would be hazy because she don't try to, she blocks those memories out from resurfacing and facing it. So whatever happened that let her become great, she kind of sacrificed a whole past identity, Sophie, it became Grace. And I said, wow, that's something. Because that stuff happens. Like, when somebody goes through sexual trauma or child abuse or something, and it's so severe, and it triggers you, and it's like you lost yourself, it's not it's not uncommon that you create a whole or new identity. Somebody that you try to escape from your old life. You don't want no part of your old life. You don't want an identity. So maybe that's why she went to the streets, because she was like, being on the streets, even though I had thing. You know, I don't know home to go to. I don't have to friend for myself. I can be there at myself and I don't need to go. I can just escape them and go away. I don't want to go back to the home. I don't want to stay in there. I don't want that. I don't want to keep on the streets and be myself and just walk around. So basically she said she don't want to have that staple environment because whatever happened to her, she lost that. So she ran in the streets and just be a nobody so nobody could focus on her. So they would say, they just, let's go back to Spence. Because she has a, especially, oh, uh, you know why they made her go to Spence? It's like, she set a term for one of the guy. Um, it was a college term. And they realized, like, yo, that was something like that um, you would not say as a regular person on the street. So she probably was knowledgeable in the school. So they said maybe something triggered her in school that led her to become Grace. So what happened to Sophie? So Benson took her to the college and they was walking around, they was talking, they were talking, having a good time. 
And remember that saying that better be poor, um, better be poor. And um, they went to the building and she said she was doing pre-med. I said, oh, okay. That's when she was getting all that good times. And she was walking in the hallway and then she was getting anxious. And she said, let's go to the stadium. Let's go to the stadium. Because I realized that building, it was triggering her ex uh, anxiety. It was maybe led to her creating this new identity. So they went down with that and she said, one of the professors, Professor Adams. And she went, they went down and she was trying not to go to the office because she, I guess when they get close to Professor Adam's office, she started getting more anxious and nervous. So Bissa said, it's okay. I go, it's okay. I'm here for you. So they went to the office and that's when she broke down and realized and revealed what happened to her. She said that she went to Professor Adams to get some extra credit. And Professor Adams said he go for, he believe in sex for um, grades. And she was not down with that, so he took her, put her on the couch, and started to vapor her. And she realized she had a pen in it, and I guess she was like busting the thing. She had a scar, and she got away and everything. And then she said, what we're going to do? And Bessie said, we need to look at the guy in the face and tell her you really feel. And then this lady came in, she said, what are you doing in my office? She said, I could have this Professor Adam's office. She said, oh, well, Professor Adams died. And now she, Grace is upset. Grace and Sophie is upset. They went back in the office. And she said, you told me if I will face the guy, all that stuff like that, and I see him, it will help me make better. It will help me heal. And now it's not to happen because he's dead. And I can't tell him what I, was, what I want to say. And flip the table and having a uh, pan, um, burst attack and anger outburst. And I understand why she feeling that way. It's like, she finally got to a point that she could face the reality and face the attacker, but now the attacker is dead. So she said it's too late. So she went back on the street and all that stuff. She left out. And Professor said she can't hold her and everything. She can't put a sight wall and whatever, all that stuff. Mental institution drug her out for a couple of days and stuff like that. We say we had to find another way. And Carissa said something. He said, if this guy wasn't dead, I would speak on my mind. And it gave her an idea. I said, maybe if she can't speak to him personally, she could go to this grave site. And that's where they went. They went to the grave site, and she spoke her mind, spoke from her heart, told her how she really feel about what he did to her. It was like, made her, you took her innocence away from her. So, took her life away. And now that you're dead, she you know what? She realized that she needs to live her life. She's not dead, and she needs to move on forward. And with the help of her family, and with the help of her friends, she could do that. And that's how the episode ended. And they started hugging and they said, we will. We will make it better. We will heal. And this is the first step of her healing. Now she faced the attacker and she spit her mind and spit opening. Then she can start healing from that. And it will take it will take time. But as individual counseling and she get counseling sessions and she build a, a bomb with her father again, it will help. And she contact Benson and she can help her whenever she needs to get her life back together and it was a good episode i enjoyed it i had learned a lot i learned about a new disorder or something like that um and it was great i said like I, like i said this episode was not so much about the case and going to court you know every episode we used to have the court and then the judge and stuff it was just too mad when she realized that she said that she wasn't raped that case was out of question now it's more of her healing process and I guess a first step of healing is to figure out what uh, triggered it, face that trigger, and go from there. And once you've released that pain and burning that you got inside, then she don't have to create grace anymore. She have to be grace. She can still go back to being Sophie. And the only reason she created grace is because she cut off her whole life from that one experience and move on to another experience. And... She said she had men use her body for sex with food, beat her up and everything because she was so just distraught and she had nothing else to do and she gave up her life. So that was a good episode. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Hit that red subscribe button down below. Please also share my videos. Uh, hopefully you can join as one of my subscribers and I can continue to push content out of it. 
Law and Order is being coming a really good season so far. I mean, Law and Order SVU has been good for a long time. That's why that's one of the Law and Orders that's still running. And 20 years strong, 20 seasons still is a bit of a long time. And it's still, still fresh and new. It's like every episode I still get amazed and learn about different things. And, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.